Hello, today I'm going to be talking about Jews Don't Count by David Baddiel, who is a writer and comedian based in London. Uh, this came out in 2021 and it's written from a position of extreme frustration at what Baddiel sees as the entire world turning a complete blind eye to anti-Semitism. The whole book is about how anti-Semitism isn't treated as seriously as other forms of racism. He does this through loads and loads of different examples, from how we continue to support flagrant anti-Semites from history, such as T.S. Eliot and Roald Dahl, how contemporary politicians and celebrities aren't condemned or cancelled for anti-Semitic remarks, um, and how social media platforms uh, do not treat hate speech against Jews with anywhere near the same severity that they treat hate speech against other ethnic groups. He talks about the poor representation of Jews in media and how casting Jewish roles um, is not given the same sensitivity as other ethnic groups, and also how Jewface isn't taken anywhere near as seriously as blackface. It posits that the reason that people don't think anti-Semitism is as serious as other forms of racism is because Jews are perceived as rich and they're perceived as white, so they don't need the same protections because it's just not as bad. So let's talk about those two things, being rich and being white. Badil talks about this high-low duality, so hate speech against Jews is often about how they're dirty and they're vermin, um, but then on the other side of things they're also perceived as being really rich and really powerful and they represent capitalism and therefore they have this high status which is also a means for criticism. There aren't very many statistics in this which I think is a shame, uh, but one that I do want to highlight that was mentioned was about the highest earning ethnic groups in the US and actually Jews are not the richest. <laughs> Across the board Hindus are, have a higher mean and median income. On Jews being white, uh, Bedil talks about Schrodinger's whites, and I love it when people inappropriately <laughs> use Schrodinger. Jews are white or not white, depending on the context of the conversation, and almost always to their disadvantage. To white supremacists, Jews are never white, um, but to people fighting racism against black people, they're very much lumped in with all of the whites. So Bedil very much rebuffs um, the advantages of being rich and the advantages of, of being white, uh, but I don't think he really, really grapples with the consequences of that. Um, so now, me, random white British girl who has not read any racial studies text, is going to talk to you about racism. So for the last five years or so, my internal understanding of what racism is, is it's discrimination based, based on race, so whether that's being able to exercise authority or not being safe. And I think the cultural narrative, mostly in the US, I'd say actually mostly in the last year, has really reduced that to like white and black. And that's like a nice simple formula. It's kind of nice to just be like, okay, I can be racist against black people, but they can't be racist against me. I'll just go sit in my corner. And that simple formula has definitely woken a lot of people up to a lot of the institutional racism, especially in the US, especially against black people. Um, but the lack of nuance is really hurtful when you're, for example, talking about anti-Semitism. I'm going to broadly split racism into three categories. Uh, one is historical disparity. So a whole group having a lower socioeconomic class than a different group. For example, slavery and colonialism caused this historical disparity between groups. And then there's institutional racism, which I think of as being very contemporary and being about how it's harder for you to achieve your goals because of your race in the present moment. So that's disconnected from the socioeconomic class you're, you're in. Um, and then there's everyday racism, which is about verbal and physical abuse and lack of safety. I think it is unquestionable that Jews can and do experience everyday racism, and that is an area where Jews are treated particularly unfairly because of this perception of anti-Semitism being less um, important to deconstruct than other forms of racism. But the historic and the institutional ones are really interesting. But of course, Jews across history have been extremely targeted. Um, the Holocaust was by far the biggest extermination of an ethnic group ever. And that is why we're taught about it. It is not just because they're white and we care more about white people. It was so much more deadly, both in the, the total numbers and in the proportion of Jews that were exterminated um, than any other genocide in history. But because Jews are now perceived as being rich and being pretty comfortable, is there a historic di disparity? Are they, as a group, um, in a worse place than other groups? And I think the answer to that is broadly no. And I'm not saying that because I think that it's right that they're perceived as rich, um, but they are practically not worse off than other ethnic groups in terms of their socioeconomic status compared to other groups. And the institutional racism, I think this is the interesting one, where 
um, it's perceived as being uh, no, if anything, Jews have a leg up because capitalism, etc. When actually there are some very interesting examples in the book, particularly through a media lens and a film and TV world, of it being decidedly harder to make your way in the world as a Jewish person to the extent that like a lot of Jewish people will hide their Jewishness. And I think that's not really regarded and respected by the wider culture as being an issue. One of the things I particularly wanted to bring up was David Baddiel's position on Palestine. Um, he's talking about how uh, whenever you're talking about Jewish stuff and anti-Semitism on Twitter, for example, so many tweet, literally screenshots of tweets in this book, like it's not gonna um, <laughs> age very well, uh, but you know, it's the landscape that he's in and it's appropriate. But um, whenever he's, he's talking about anti-Semitism, people bring up Palestine as if he's supposed to feel responsible and have a strong position and have to defend it. Badil goes the opposite direction and he says, for those who might be wondering, my position on Israel is I don't care about it more than any other country and to assume I do is racist. To assume that I have to have a strong position either way on Israel is racist. And on the following page he says, some people feel this is a callous attitude that I should care more about the Palestinians. I do care, but not more than I care about the Rohingya or people suffering in Syria, blah, blah, blah. And when I read that, I thought I kind of agree. Um, and I think it's a very strong position when you're talking about like, I am a Jew in the world today, like the historical context um, doesn't matter. Like I'm not then therefore connected to Israeli Jews. But then later on when he's quoting someone saying that anti-Semitism at this point in history is primarily experienced as prejudice and hostility against Jews as Jews, largely without aspects of material dispossession, which is basically like, you're not poor, so it's fine. And he says, in one very simple way, of course, they're right. Jews in general are not now having their assets stripped from them in the same way they were during 1930s in Germany. But that is to imagine that history does not live both in the memory and in the culture, which I think really contradicts his position on Palestine because we don't live in a vacuum. Like very rightly, he's saying here that you know, we, we remember the Holocaust. It's very, we're very aware of what can happen when people don't take anti-Semitism seriously, having that ancestral knowledge. So, so at this point in the book, I was like, mm, the whole not caring about Israel thing is a bit weak. Um, and then I thought about it and I was like, that's because um, I feel like as a British person that I am, I, that I have to be apologetic for colonialism if I'm also a royalist. I feel like there's an understanding that if you are rejecting your cultural history, you then don't have to take responsibility for the um, like dirtier side of the history. But if you're claiming any badges from the past, whether that be pride of like the great things that my country has done, or like an awareness of the, the horrors in, in your cultural history, you do also have to take the other side of it. And I don't really know. I don't know if it's it's weak of me to think that you need to have a position on that to be able to claim that. But if I said to you, I'm very proud to be English, industrial revolution, the world's language, but then didn't also take responsibility for like how much suffering the, like the proliferation of English as the world's language um, has caused, I think that would be quite weak. I don't know. I would love to hear your opinion on that because I am still quite confused by it. So this has been a video on Jews Don't Count by David Baddiel. Um, obviously very much came from a place of defensiveness. So you do have to grant it um, some of its focuses on stuff that is like particularly Baddiel-ish. Um, and yeah, lots of, <laughs> lots of media and politics and Twitter. Um, but it's really shone a light on something that I haven't, haven't at all engaged with, even through the scandal with Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party, which he does talk about here. Um, just haven't really paid that much attention to it because I don't know any Jewish, I don't think I know any Jewish people. Um, it's never been something I've really had to confront. But I want to be just as anti-racist for Jewish people as I am for other groups. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'd love to hear your views on it in the comments below. Thanks a lot. Bye.